Good morning. We're now 10 days beyond Easter, and we're continuing our study on the resurrection, um, giving them a little bit more attention to just the significance of the resurrection beyond just the celebration that Jesus rose from the dead on Easter. We're now looking at uh, the resurrection from the perspective of the substance of the resurrection and its power to have an impact on our living. So I'm going to be looking at 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and the first few verses. Now, brothers and sisters, I want to remind you of the gospel I preached to you, which you received and on which you have taken your stand. By this gospel, you're saved. If you hold firm to the word I preached to you, otherwise, you've believed in vain. For what I received, I passed on to you as of first importance that Christ died for our sins, according to the scriptures, that he was buried that he was raised on the third day, according to the scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas, and then to the 12. And after that, he appeared to more than 500 of the brothers and sisters at the same time, most of whom are still living, though some have fallen asleep. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles, and last of all, he appeared also to me as one abnormally born. Let me just bring a little bit more attention to this emphasis that's placed on the appearance of Jesus Christ uh, following death and resurrection. Um, there's some real substance here uh, to give evidence and proof uh, so that people would receive this gospel and believe that God fulfilled the scriptures, sent the Messiah, the Messiah died for their sins, and they are forgiven. And as a result of forgiveness, they've come into a relationship with God whereby they have been saved. This gospel um, is the truth by which they've received salvation by faith. So I want us to just take a look at uh, the evidence that supports the fact of Christ being risen from the dead. Um, in my Bible, uh, a new NIV Bible, there is a, a particular uh, collection of scriptures brought together under the topic of resurrection appearances. And I just want us to note one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, perhaps 14, beyond the, those that are listed, 14 evidences that support the fact that Jesus rose from the dead. So uh, the empty tomb, uh, which was referenced in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John on resurrection day, the tomb was empty. To Mary Magdalene in the garden, Christ appeared uh, in Mark 16, 9, and in John 20, 11. To the other women who came to anoint his body uh, for burial in Matthew 28, verse 9 and following. To two people going to Emmaus. These were the two apostles en route to Emmaus who met Jesus uh, as they traveled. They come back and reported in Jerusalem to the other disciples, apostles. This appears in Mark 16, 12 through 13, and Luke 24, 13 through 32. He appeared to Peter, a brief reference to Peter uh, being um, brought into Christ's presence after his death and resurrection in Luke 24, 34. He appears to the 10 disciples in the upper room. We're familiar with that. He then appears to the 11 uh, when Thomas joins them. Uh, these are referenced in John's gospel in John chapter 20, 19 through 31 two appearances there, to the 10 and then to the 11. He appears to the seven disciples sometime later at the Sea of Galilee where they're fishing uh, and, and they eat with Jesus, fish on the beach in John 21, one through 23. He appears to the 11 disciples on a mountain, a mountain Jesus referred to that he would meet them on um, Mark 16, 15 through 18. He then at some point appears to more than 500 at the same time. He appears to James, the brother of Jesus, at a latter time. Uh, he appears to the disciples at the time of his dissension, ascension, 40 days after Jesus' resurrection, referenced in Luke 24, 44 through 49. And then he appears to Paul as well. Uh, I would also note that while we don't have specific uh, reference to an appearance, we understand that the guards who were placed at the tomb to ensure that the word that Jesus spoke after I'm crucified three days later, I'll rise from the dead. They sealed the tomb, placed the guard. Uh, it says in Matthew 28, 11 through 15, that these guards went to the chief priest to report everything that had happened. 
And having reported that, they were then paid by the chief priests a large sum of money to communicate um, that Jesus' uh, disciples came and stole his body by night while they were asleep. So these evidences are brought to our attention, um, making a strong case uh, by way of all these witnesses that Jesus rose from the dead. But I'm particularly taken to the book of Acts where the testimony of Peter and Paul substantiates the fact uh, as they serve as then witnesses that stand before contrary people or doubting people to assure them uh, that Jesus is the Son of God attested by the fact that he rose from the dead. And so I'll just share some scriptures here that um, make this strong statement based on these eyewitnesses and Peter and Paul, one being an eyewitness and Paul having seen Jesus um, in, in the appearance on the road to Damascus. So these scriptures are provided for us. In Acts chapter 2, 32 and 34, it says, you with the help of wicked men put him, Jesus, to death by nailing him on the cross. But God raised him from the dead, freeing him from the agony of death because it was impossible for death to hold him. Just that strong statement, it was impossible for death to hold Jesus. Uh, again, in Acts chapter 2 and verse 32, he was not abandoned to the realm of the dead, nor did his body see decay. So in fulfillment of the Old Testament prophecy, uh, God raised this Jesus to life. We are all witnesses. And then continuing in Acts chapter 3, 14 and 15, in the testimony that's given by Peter, you put to death the Prince of Peace, the one whom God raised from the dead, a fact to which we are all witnesses. So just the strong statement, this is a fact. This is not hearsay. This is not based on um, disillusionment or uh, problems with uh, having a right mind. Uh, following the death of Christ to make statements that he, these are facts they're saying we we are eyewitnesses to this Acts chapter 5 32 the God of our ancestors raised Jesus from from the dead whom you killed by hanging on a cross God exalted him to his own right hand as prince and savior that he might bring Israel to repentance and forgiveness of sins we are witnesses of these things and so is the Holy Spirit. So not only are we witnessing to this fact, but the Holy Spirit is confirming it with evidence that is substantiating this truth. Supernaturally, God is bringing confirmation to the fact that Jesus was risen from the dead by the witness of the Holy Spirit, as well as their witness. Acts 10, verse 40. They killed him by hanging him on the cross, but God raised him from the dead on the third day, and caused him to be seen. He was not seen by all the people, but by witnesses whom God had already chosen, by us who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. So not only did we see him risen from the dead, but we were chosen by God such that we saw him risen from the dead, and then we ate and drank with him after he rose. So this is great, great evidence that we have that supported the uh, resurrection from the dead. So the evidence that's supplied to us, um, both by all these uh, 13, 14 different experiences where people saw Jesus resurrected from the dead, and then the very strong testimony to what uh, Paul and Peter would attest to as being a fact. God raised his son, Jesus Christ, from the dead. This is the uh, substantial truth in which the believer places their faith so that they would believe and believe not in vain, but that their faith in Jesus Christ, the Savior, the one who came to take upon himself our sin and offer us forgiveness, our faith in Christ, substantiated by the resurrection of Christ from the dead. But Christ has indeed been raised from the dead. He's the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. Christ has indeed been raised from the dead. It is a fact. It's substantiated by many witnesses. And these witnesses were also then supported by the confirming work of the Holy Spirit in supernatural ways that attested to the report that the apostles and Paul were bringing to the people. 
that their faith would be based on the truth of the resurrection. Let's pray together. God, we thank you that our, our faith is grounded in a fact and in this truth, substantiated by eyewitnesses who saw Christ risen from the dead, who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead, who saw him ascending into heaven. These eyewitnesses then give substantial testimony confirmed by the Holy Spirit that Jesus Christ, the Son of God, the Messiah, rose from the dead. Death did not defeat him, but he conquered death. Our faith in Christ is based on a fact that you, O oh God, raised your son from the dead and you chose certain people to be witnesses to this fact in that they saw him with their own eyes. Thank you, God. And I thank you, God, not only that we base our faith on this fact, but you, the living Christ, by the power of the Holy Spirit, you make this resurrection truth, truth to us by the move of the Holy Spirit, giving us eyes to see and ears to hear such that we believe because we personally have experienced the resurrected Christ in our lives. Thank you, almighty God, for making this truth this fact, a fact and truth to us. It changes our life, oh God. Thank you for the work of your spirit in us based on the truth of the resurrection. In Jesus' name we give thanks.